Well, you'll want to take note of our next offering and the latest in revolutionary food. It shreds like meat and is even supposed to taste like meat, but it's not meat. Scientists at NTU are working on a greener alternative to plant-based protein, a fungi that can grow from food waste. For a tasting of what's cooking, we have with us Professor William Chen, Director, Food, Science and Technology Program at Nanyang Technological University. Professor Chen, welcome, and it's good to see you today. The, you know, the fungi that you've been working on, it looks like a mushroom, but is it, uh, is it that? Well, actually, it is a mushroom uh, that we are working on. Um, the context of uh, our new innovation is actually along this uh, direction of developing plant-based protein. So uh, here we are not talking about just growing mushroom for, the, for what we have been eating, the Asian consumers. Uh, rather, we are talking about utilizing the whole mushroom and the underneath of mushroom, we call it mycelium, the root of mushroom, which is equally rich in nutrients. So at developing this uh, uh, innovation to make use of mushroom plus mycelium into the plant-based protein. Right, so using the entire plant. Absolutely. Right. And, and as you mentioned, an important thing, because it needs to have some sort of nutritional value, doesn't it? Uh, what makes it nutritious? Well, if we compare a mushroom farming to a normal uh, plant mm. farming, you, you need soy. And the, for the mushroom farming, the soy actually comes from carbon-rich mm. fiber like uh, uh, paper cardboard or wood chips. But you need other nutrients like fertilizer. So in this case, we are developing, we are using this uh, uh, food processing industry side stream like soybean residue as a nutrient source so that the mushrooms that come out of it are more nutritious mm -hmm. and also uh, they grow faster. Therefore, the mushrooms that come, come out from our innovations are more nutritious. So it's growing in a form of organic material as well? That's right. Is that right? Okay, so, so you mentioned earlier that uh, you, when we were chatting that it's a greener alternative to, and there are others who are trying to develop uh, you know, this sort of plant-based protein. So in what way is it greener? Well, if we look at the plant-based uh, uh, protein industry, we need the plant for a start. And to, to, to grow the plant, uh, its traditional farming way is still very much uh, dependent on the climate conditions. Yes. Whereas when we talk about mushroom, you can grow in the dark, and then uh, you, you need very little electricity because no, no energy consumption. And also, you need very little water. And uh, when we talk about just now utilizing the entire mushroom plus mycelium, we are talking about zero waste farming. The, and the whole thing can be mm. used for the mm -hmm. development of plant-based protein. Mm. So it's quite robust, what you're saying, and resilient as well. But, you know, uh, I'm all about taste. I, I don't know about you, Don. <laughs> I'm curious. It's a very personal thing. What does it taste like? And have you had a tasting? And do you think it will appeal to the larger population? Well, one of the uh, sort of challenges uh, that we, we have come across is that uh, the, the plant-based meat doesn't quite taste like plant uh, meat itself. So what people have been doing is to add in different ingredients to make, make, make it taste like real meat. Mm. But with mushroom, we, we actually do not have this problem because mushroom has a natural umami taste, mm. you know, uh, the taste of the meat. And plus, mushroom naturally, they have a lot of micronutrients. By, by that, I mean these uh, minerals and vitamins, they're all there. So which means when we develop mushroom-based meat, we, need, we will need less processing steps which means mm. less costly and consumer buying will be greater because they will be less worried about so many processing steps. Is it, is it, is it hyper-processed food or these kind of things? So the consumer well, buying will be I feel like different. you're preparing us to not focus so much on the taste, but to think about <laughs> the nutritional values on it. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, you were saying that, uh, you know, you won't add other ingredients to this product, per se, necessarily. Well, w might there be the addition of other uh, you know, sort of uh, ingredients to this product? Well, so uh, when, if, we talk, if we cook at home, uh, um, when you stir fry mushrooms, naturally you can smell a little bit like chicken meat, right? right. So that, that's mm. because of the umami taste. That's all the savory. That's in there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so it's a natural uh, composition mm. of, the, of the mushroom. It's more complete. I'm not saying it's a total replacement. Rather, we are, we are trying to provide a new option 
to yeah, this. So, uh, yeah. so as you were saying, there's the nutrition part, there is the taste part, that's right. uh, how it's used and so on. So tell us more about uh, the collaboration that's underway uh, with New Zealand on scaling up production, because that's what it's, what it's all about. We need a lot of it, right? That's right, that's right. So, so as, uh, as we mentioned, uh, we know that uh, our government has been pushing a lot on the tech-driven mm. food security, a lot of new initiative and tech-driven innovations. But Singapore uh, is actually a very small country, so the market is small and the impact will be, uh, we need to bring this out of Singapore. Mm. So by having this uh, request from overseas uh, companies, that is really bridge a gap so that uh, we create this win-win situation our, through this tech transfer we actually bring our technology beyond the, the Singapore uh, border so that uh, uh, actually in time to come it will be easier for regional partners to work together rather than in the past we just use a transaction to buy food, import food. Now we have built this personal relationship. Mm. So in time to come, I, I believe that it will be more natural for us to work together to overcome the challenges yes. in food security. Uh, having said that, you know, we, we still have a sustainability, a food sustainability issue. And there is that 2030, 30% by 2030 um, aim and goal out there. So I, I'm wondering, you know, once you've done your partnerships with uh, New Zealand, what's the potential of scaling up the farming uh, here in Singapore? Well, uh, I, I, we, we believe that uh, with these advantages of mushroom farming, uh, you know, uh, low, low cost in terms of uh, infrastructure setup, because mushroom farming we can decentralize to the household, to the community, mm -hmm. so there's a, a natural uh, reduction in the cost, operation cost. And also we have this, uh, uh, there's no need for light, so no, no energy uh, requirement. No need for water. Our technology actually minimizes the utilization of water. And so all these combined together, we're, seeing, we're not saying this is a, 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 you know, the only option available. We are, we are providing more options mm. for us to move towards this 30 by 30 goal. It, it yes. sounds like it ticks a lot of boxes, though. Uh, we hope so. Yeah. 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 Well, we wish the, you the very best with this project, Professor Chen, and uh, we will invite you back to do a taste test. <laughs> yeah. Jill will, sure, will, will sure. offer herself Absolutely. as a candidate. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me here. Thank you, yeah. you Professor Chen. Yeah. So thank you. That, of course, was uh, Professor William Chen from NTU talking about his mushrooming project.